All right, friend. So what you going by tonight? I'm now born. My name is now born. Now born. I right, put your right hand up and your left hand on your word, wherever you decide the word is. My word is born. All right, hold it just like that. Do you solemnly agree we have your permission to post this across all of our social media platforms? Yeah. Is there anything, and I do mean anything, that's off limits you don't want us to ask you about? I'm cracking up. Well, I won't answer if it's inappropriate in my mind. I don't really know something like, you know, that's a real. Okay, so do you understand that if we do ask you something that's off limits, you can say no, pass, or. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get it. Okay, literally, it's no pressure. I'm your host, Bang on Bug. It's your girl, just K for real. And we got a special guest. He already introduced himself. So tell us where you originally from. South Carolina. And um, so, how you end up here? Um, I just moved out here about a year ago. <laughs> Y'all lived in New York, you know, Maryland, you know, different places. What part? What part of what? New Maryland. York, Maryland, Glen Burnie. Oh, I'm crying. Okay. You moved there? I'm from PG. But that's the dirty part. No, it's actually the richest, most affluent black county in the country. Get your stuff together. Talk about it. Okay, that, that was all I needed to say. Okay. But um, back to you. <laughs> okay, did you grow up both of your parents? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Talk about it. What you mean, kind of? Um, that I don't want to go too deep into about my, my family, but um, yeah, mo for the most part, I knew my dad my whole life, and that's what my mom though. So you close with your dad? Like y'all like best friends? We're cool. Yeah. I ain't gonna say best friends, but you know. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, I don't um, be alive. Yeah, I talk to him all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what do you um do you see what do you see in him you see in yourself? A lot. <laughs> you know, a lot of my face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um that's a lot of the way I think too. He got that like hustler spirit like you, like you always trying to make some shit happen. In his own right, yeah. You know, just different ways, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, um, give me the most traumatic experience as a child. That's kind of personal, you know what I mean? I wasn't abused sexually, no shit like not that kind of personal, but like uh, just witnessing certain things in my household or that were kind of traumatic. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, um, okay, well we'll go. We'll start with your heartbreak. What was like your real first heartbreak? Like, um, how did you recover from it? You mean relationship type heartbreak yeah. or just disappointment? Both. I mean, he ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna really disappointment, but my first relationship heartbreak, I don't wanna go into detail, right? But, um. You say you don't want to? Come on here? <laughs> oh, well, all right, well. <laughs> Even if it's old, what she gonna it's beat you old? up? Old? <laughs> uh, nah, it's uh, a long time ago. Uh, I got my heart broken one time by a woman. And. I'm not recovered by time, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, just growing up. It's years ago now, it's over two decades now, so. <laughs> like, so what she do? What did she do? Yeah, like, how, how was your heart broken? What, what broke your heart about it? Okay, well, she just left. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then come back. Yeah. That's the heartbreak part, like, you know what I mean? When, you know what I mean? So you cried? Mm -hmm. You ain't crying? That ain't real heartbreak. That yeah, you gotta cry. cry. That's that's the real shit. You be crying like crying a bitch. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, you <laughs> crying, don't get her back. I cried. I mean, I cried a few times. They ain't gonna come back. It's just like you just let that shit out. Think about it. You're crying what in front of them? Because if you no, cry, no, you're not no. seeing it. Then you know you really cry for nothing for real. To me, so, <laughs> like they don't see you crying. Like, so it ain't for sympathy, it's just like to like, it's just like you release. relieving, yeah, like a release type thing. So you don't cry if you go through pain? Yeah, I have cried through some pain, but like, it was deep pain, like, you know, somebody died, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like that was real close, like, and it's been people that died I haven't cried. It's been people that have died and I was just 
callous almost. Like, all right, what's for lunch? You know what I mean? But like certain people that have died, like my best friend who started my brand Wildlife with me, Trav, you know, when he died, I cried. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I cry for certain things, but like for that type of stuff, like a woman breaking my heart, maybe when I was a young boy, I probably cried about it. But now I see crying as like futile, you know, like for what? What's it gonna solve? Okay. Really crying about anything. That's the only time I really, I don't even cry like when my family members die, but it's just like if I've been in love and that shit go bad and this shit over, like I cry. It don't be like for a long period of time. You might cry like a minute or two, and you be like, "Damn, I gotta go back to fucking with these hoes again." Or, Do you feel like just time wasted, or it's it really hurt for losing the person? It hurt. Okay. Yeah, it's like a pain. Like it's just like a pain. Like they say, you can equate it to like getting hit by a car or something. Like it's pain. Oh yeah, I feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the last last time you said to yourself, "It's not worth it." Probably today. I don't know. Like, you know, the people who may get on my nerves or something, and you know, my normal reaction is to do something crazy. You know, I normally say it's not worth it because of what I try to do. You know, so, so I go through that almost daily with people because of you know. Well, with females? Nah, just people in general, man. You know, in my workplace or whatever. You know, just Are you testing? Yeah, you know, people just move a little different. I ain't from here, you know, and then I just came from where I came from. So I'm a little conditioned to like look at certain things people say and do and take it a little personal sometimes and check people like that normally you wouldn't check, you know what I mean? Or something like that. Let me switch it up. Um, since yeah. you brought up work, right? I was at work. And um, I, I was hearing these guys, they was like, uh, wake up. And they was like, oh, I ain't never been this drunk. So when I finished unloading, I hit the guy. He said, I'm going to call the police because the guy ain't waking up. And the first thing I thought, I said, why niggas always calling the police? Like, the niggas just probably sleep. So I go look at the nigga. I'm all close. And I, I wasn't seeing the move. And I finally seen his chest. He looked like it went up and down. So I went in the store and came back out. The police pulled him out of the car. And they did CPR on him for like five minutes. This nigga ain't moved, so he was like dead. Mm -hmm. And he looked like he was like my age. Like he had just came from the club or something. He was just sitting in the car tilted. And I was like, damn, I'm glad dude did call the police. Because I would have just been like, he's sleeping. Mm -hmm. So um, is it a time where y'all like um, should have called the police with, and y'all didn't? And you mm -hmm. never been in that situation? No. I thought about it like that probably would have been a better thing to do than. No, well, I never should have called the police for nothing. He <laughs> said <laughs> I never should have did it. I'm cracking up. What about you, Ken? I don't think so. I don't really be saying nothing really go on for real. I be missing everything. I was just thinking about that. Just like maybe sometimes they would be a good thing to do because you know when you from the hood and shit, like you don't supposed to call the police when. You know what I'm saying? If I would have seen her early, he might have been saved instead of me just saying, uh, you know, like, you cool. Like, so I just wanted to bring it. I got a question on top of heartbreak. What you was going to say? Just to kind of like reiterate on that, like, uh, so like, can you give us an instance where it would be a good time to call the police? Uh, I don't like when, take um, over the show with that. Like, it's just kind of like, like um, <laughs> sometimes like family members be fucking with the little kids. And if you ain't gonna oh, do nothing, call the police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't gonna beat the shit out the nigga, break his legs, call the police. Yeah, I would recommend that first. Beat his ass, you know. Bad. Right. But some people be worried like about all my the family videos. just come together and catch him. You know, and beat shit out of him. So they worry about bills. Yeah, cause that's what when I be like, I'm gonna get that nigga. Oh, you you gotta pay this and pay that. You can't be acting like that. Yeah, like you can't go so, to jail about it. So that's what they be thinking. Like I ain't gonna mess up what I got going. Mm -hmm. but, My question is, who calling the cops? Like y'all gonna call the cops on me? Who was about to tell on me that I'm about to get get in trouble? What you mean? They be like, you got this and that to take care of. Okay, so don't call nobody when I do it. Yeah, because really the best thing would be to do is everybody go over there 
And whoever the crazy nigga beat the shit out of the nigga on the police come say the nigga who got beat up studied. Yeah. It. And everybody had the same story. That's yeah. could be the, that'll be the best thing to do. But y'all over here planning on telling on me. So y'all telling me so what they I got to like do. He gonna tell. Nah, y'all got my back. That's when you gotta start holding people accountable. Now we good. <clears throat> Just look them in their eyes. Like, you know. But on the uh, topic of heartbreak, so um Let's say a random person because I don't want to call out. But I was recently talking to somebody and they were like telling me about a female that they was dealing with. So the girl, they gave the girl two times basically. So they was talking for a minute, didn't realize the girl, she played a whole new life. She was single as far as they knew. He found out that he that she had to do because he was trying to like come give her some food basically, bring her some food. And so the dude come out behind there like, and he like, who this? And he like, nigga, this my girl or whatever. And try to come to the dude. So he like, I'm not about to do this. And he left the situation. So she came back, try to explain it all. He let it go, move forward. Move forward, she go take a trip with her sister or whatever. And the phone rang. And he was like, guess what was on the phone? I was like, I don't want to know what was on the phone. He's like, you do. <laughs> so... Basically, she getting she getting threats or whatever. She getting hit while the phone is picking up, but it was on his answering machine. So he got a whole voicemail of his girl that he gave a second chance to get hit on the phone or whatever. This one your friend? It's just a <laughs> random guy. <laughs> it's a lift passenger. Oh, yeah, it's a lift passenger. That's funny. So if that was to happen to you, like, how do you react in that situation? And mind you, she's out of town. Say, let's say if you live in Atlanta, she was in Florida. What do you do in that situation if you call, you catch the voicemail? Are you gonna wait for her to come back to address it? You gonna go, oh, we try to go. What you doing? Hold on, hold on. So we live together, or something? Y'all live together. All right. So I'm gonna pack her stuff and then. Uh... Just get it to her. And let her know I found out and it's over. So she Thanks. <laughs> over with it. Thanks. Good riddance. Okay. So I, I had something happen to me. Like, I heard her phone answer and she was moaning like somebody was fucking. Mm -hmm. I didn't say, I just listened. I listened. And then um, she get, she came to the phone and she was like, bug, bug. I just held the phone. And then she just hung up the phone. Mm -hmm. And then she when I talked to her again, she, it's like she was trying to see did I hear anything. I act like I didn't even hear nothing. Mm. And I just fucked with until that shit played out. He let her come back. And, um, like, when she got back in town, basically, he was like, oh, check out this song or whatever that I wanted you to hear. And he played the voicemail for her, like, while she was sitting right there. I was like, <laughs> first of all, like, if that was me, I might throw up. Too much into it. Ain't just too theatrical about it, like. But I mean, I don't see what's the point of doing it if you want to stay with the person. Nah, he didn't stay with her after that time. After yeah. the voicemail, it was over, but he had to hit her with it. She was bad or something? Like, what made him just stay? She, she must have been. Bad time. <laughs> Very bad. Yeah, for him, probably. Yeah. That'll make a nigga stay, like, because. I think people be trying to forgive. Like, people be grown, so they try to work through stuff. Because her explanation was the first time. Um, he, she had been trying to break up with him, but basically, like, he not hearing it type stuff. And so, that was the first explanation. And then the second time, it's like, all right, so what was it? But, you know, he, I mean, just fuck into the shit, just play out. But you know, you can't, it can't be nothing. You can't love her. Yeah, it can't nothing come from him. I mean, you can love him, but I mean, it just ain't nothing gonna come from him. Mm. It's just, yeah. I would, I think I would throw it up. Don't. If you hear somebody fucking? Oh my God. Like when he started the story, I was like, oh, like, did you throw up? That's the first thing I asked him. And then when he said he played it for her, I was like, did she throw up? <laughs> no, I don't make you want to throw up. You be like, damn. It's like that getting hit by a bus feeling. No, I didn't feel that because I was in love with her, but I didn't feel that that time, like when I heard it. Mm -hmm. You still in love like, after that phone call? No, I mean, it's just like you love them, but it, it's just like ain't nothing going to be, ain't nothing going to come from it. Like, you just going to stop loving somebody, but it's just like, damn, that ain't my bitch, like, type of shit. Oof, that hurt. 
Next question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. No love. I don't give a damn. Okay. You over love? Nah, I ain't over love, but like you know, I ain't green either. You know, I ain't just gonna be no sucker and fall for the dumb shit niggas be falling for. So what you fall in love with? Uh, getting my goals accomplished. You know, that's what I'm about. Okay. Okay, um, has anyone ever left you speechless through a text or in person? What's the last sign? Nah, because I always got to come back. My mouth is sporty as hell. That's always been. I heard somebody saying, um, if you always like coming, if you thinking of something to come back with, you're not really listening. Do y'all feel like that? Yes. Sometimes I might not listen if I feel like I don't need to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know. It is what it is. <laughs> what about you, Jay? Say it again. Thanks. And um, you ever been left speechless from a text or like in person? Nah, I kind of always got something to say too. But I mean, these days, I'm trying to not to address everything. I just be like. I, I can just kind of chalk it up. I'm like, oh, that's who you are. Like, all right, cool. I just, I know how to treat you later on. Most of the time when I ignore something, like if somebody walk past me, don't say excuse me, that shit, it's like normal now. Mm. And I just be like, motherfucker, like, but <laughs> <laughs> I just don't say that. I just leave it alone. Okay, um, the last time you man, uh, manipulated somebody. Man, come on. You want me to tell on myself on here? I'm crying. Well, let me see. I, what, oh, it, could it, it could be old. It could be old. Huh? It could be old. What, what, the story? Yeah, like when you get done. No, I'm not giving that story. That's the one I won't tell. That, didn't you say I got one? Um, I'm crying. <laughs> you you caught like three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'm like the third or fourth one. I don't, I don't know. Not really the fifth. But, I mean, manipulate me in control in a skillful manner, so it, it's not... Bad. It's just like getting having your chick under control type shit, man. Well, what if the person I manipulated watches or some shit? You know what I mean? Now it's just like this motherfucker. You, you gotta pick I mean? somebody who's not around no more. We don't know. We can skip that one, right? Like, I don't. Mm -hmm. you know, you know. Look, look at you. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, you feel like you. I mean, if, if that's the definition of control and a skillful manager, you feel like. That's how most men and most women treat their partner. Yeah. I can control them like a certain way. I gotta do this in order to get that. Yeah. It's just, it's normal. It's not really a bad thing, you don't think, do you? I think manipulation is bad. Um, I guess used as an attack, not necessarily as tactful, if that makes sense. So don't, like, don't try to play nobody by manipulating them. But yeah, we manipulate each other all day long in the paint. So sick. <laughs> okay, it's a quote. Um, An apology without change is manipulation. Do y'all agree? Yeah. It's a lie. Like, don't, don't apologize if you're going to do it again. Y'all got examples? I, I might um, disagree. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, Cause like sometimes you can sincerely apologize, right? But might not have the discipline to not do the shit again. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's the point of the apology? There we go. The apology, I would say, is to, um, you know, express some type of... Remorse? Yeah, for the hurt you caused that person. But like, you know. So your apologies be like, I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> I don't do much apologizing. I don't do no explaining. Like, I got PTSD and all kind of shit, bro. Like, you know, you got to just know me to know what's on my mind. Like, you know what I mean? I hate explaining and I hate apologizing because I don't ever feel like I wrong people. You know what I mean? Dang. Like, so. Dang. What's your longest relationship? It don't seem long. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's how you are. <laughs> yeah, not long. Probably a couple years. You know. Long distance? No. For real? Like in, in the house? Yeah, in the house. She was real passive? 
kind of. Mm. Yeah, you know, she had a time, but you know. Yeah, that's crazy. He's like, nah, I'm right. Okay, um, well, you know, I was right. But you don't think you're wrong, though? I've been wrong before, but like I try to make wiser choices and stuff. Like that. <laughs> I'm older now. Okay, so um, when you was locked up, like, how do you keep people from trying you? Like, do you have to act a certain way, or like, what's the key to that? I guess everybody got different ways they handle it, right? Uh, you know, and people will try you. You know, I've been tried once. You know what I mean by a group. You know, but like the way I am, I'm kind of like, you know, introverted, insular or whatever. And like, so people don't really know how to read me a lot of times, you know what I mean? You know, so um, I just carry myself like a man, bro. You know what I mean? You know, don't bow down. You know, I kind of like grew up back there. I just did 15 years in there. And it's kind of like, you know, looking at. When I first went in and who I am now, it's kind of like, damn, you know, I was greener then, you know. But, like, I all, I never was afraid when I went in there, you know, I never backed down. I actually went in there with some aggressive shit, like trying niggas, bro, like, <laughs> thinking that's what I got to do, you know, because that was my first adult bid and shit. So, you know, um, but, I don't know, just hold your own, man, and, you know, for niggas that's in there, you know, you can stay out of shit like that if you ain't, like, borrowing shit, you know, gambling, you know, whatever the fuck you're doing in there. You can kind of stay in your lane and stay out of the way. Find you something to do. Like, I wrote those three books. I did that, you know, instead of being in the mix so much, you know what I'm saying? And to answer your question, you know, because those three books took a lot of that time, you know, and um, the editing I did myself, the everything so that but as far as just like um you know you work out you know i worked out you know what i'm saying i fought a couple niggas you know what i'm saying niggas see you fight you know see you in action that'll keep niggas <laughs> off you you know what i'm saying you know if niggas just see you not scared of letting niggas handle you any kind of way then niggas stay in their they lane you know but if you fool then they gonna eat <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i don't know I know Bernard Hopkins, he was saying, like, he he was rocking back and forth. And he did that a lot of that made people leave him alone because they thought he was crazy. See, I, that's weak as hell. Like, the niggas that did that kind of shit to me, I'm like, damn. You know, because like, I never had to do no shit like that, man. I was always just thorough enough to walk in there with my head high. I moved to a new dorm and just post up out the door, you know, don't talk to nobody. You know what I mean? Not friendly. You know, just kind of scoping it out, seeing who I want to talk to. You might see a nigga your first day doing some nut shit and be like, nah, I ain't never talking to him. You know what I mean? That's how I am. I'm more of a kind of like, I study my environment. And a lot of people, they go in there kind of scared, so they try to like join on to groups and find people to hang around. You know, I always kind of like lived in my own head. I, I'm good. I ain't really got to talk to nobody, you know. I got family, you know what I'm saying? I got a little... My niggas, you know, certain people that was there, still there, you know. That's how I do it. I mean, you like 5'4", 130 pounds, that'd probably be the best thing. I ain't 130 pounds, though. Give me about 160 at least, goddamn, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that 130 shit. And I ain't 5'4", either. Like, I'm actually like 5'11". You want to stand? Yo, let's stand up, because I don't play about yeah. that little nigga shit. You was talking about him, or you talking about the person you was, you was saying that you brought to Just, yeah, you a little, like, if you little, little, little be the... Oh, that's what you're saying. I'm that tall and skinny. No. Oh, my <laughs> no, bad. That's why I said it like that. My bad. <laughs> nah, I mean, some people do that. Uh, I just kind of be like, I just, I don't say that. If they feel like I'm <laughs> trying to talk about them, nah, I don't... Oh, no, nah, I just miscommunicated it. I ain't understand what you said. Okay, um, yeah, I'm like, you pretty tall. Um, <laughs> okay, um, if you could fall in love all over again, who would you choose? Brandy. No, I'm just playing. I'm crying. I'm in love with Brandy, though. If she watches this, she might watch this. Okay. Oh, that's somebody from the neighborhood? No, the singer. The singer. Oh, singer. Brandy Longwood, man. I know she looking crazy now with the nose out and shit, but like, uh, no, she like, can't. Now she all right. Yeah, I like for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> My crush was uh, Stacey Davis. I thought she was like the baddest bitch ever, but she was. Yeah, so I like she that. looked. 
Sean Luke is good now, but yeah, back then that bitch was the baddest bitch in the world. What was the real question though? If you could um fall in love all over again, who would you choose? Yo, I don't like that question either. Nobody. <laughs> I ain't with that falling in love shit like right now. Nah. You know? For what? You busy? Hold up, let's define falling in love. Can we do that first? What's your definition? That you're not with it. <clears throat> yes, to me it just sounds like uh, uh, like having an emotional outlook at your relationship. You know what I'm saying? More than just, uh, not a business one, but, you know, a realistic one. You know what I mean? Because, like, when you become emotionally vested in a relationship like that, then you become available to get toe up. You know what I'm saying? Like, just... So, I ain't trying to be available to be hurt like that. You know what I'm saying? So, because mm -hmm. I know that shit, breakups and all that shit, it do hurt, but I ain't going through it right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? I have, but fuck all that. That's what she I was always, so my mom told me, she said, make them hoes fall in love first. So, I mean, <laughs> that's what I tried. Don't that sound like manipulation? Hey, you gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta do it. Tell the truth, man. Be you. I think you get manipulated to tell the truth, man. I don't think so. Um, you just know when to tell the truth. That's the manipulation part. What is it? Um, I forgot the word I was looking for. Uh, selective honesty type, yeah, type shit. Okay. Um, is it awkward um, following someone on social media if you have strong feelings for them? Awkward? Yeah. If you got strong feelings for them. It's kind of fresh, like the breakup's still kind of fresh. Um, I don't know. I feel like with breakups, well, as long as we broke up, well, we done. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't even exist to me no more for real, for real. But, um, I don't know. Having strong feelings, I don't, I wouldn't say awkward. It's probably like tempting. Like, oh, it's a tempting. Like you could, you know, you could probably get it again. Or like That's for a female, but with guys, you know, it don't be that simple. Like you can just get it again. <laughs> you don't. Like y'all gotta be manipulative for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, on my end, it's like, mm, do I want to play? You know what I'm saying? Do I want to entertain this? Am I bored? Do I want to go over here? Or do I want to just mind my business? Probably. So yeah, probably more tempting than awkward. What about you? Oh, what was the question again? Like, I got is it awkward um, <laughs> following somebody on social media if you got strong feelings for them? Uh, ex? Yeah. I don't have strong feelings for exes. Like, you know, once <laughs> once we lose it, once we break up, I lose the, the same feeling. day, you just like, she don't exist. If she did, because normally, like, we became an ex because she left type shit. I don't usually, like, be the one to leave. Like, yeah, bitches always leave, don't they? So, <laughs> and then, like, if, if I'm on her page or something and I see some shit, like, where it's another nigga in any capacity, then I'm like, good well, anyway. I lose the feelings. Oh, yeah, she fucking with another nigga now. Fuck, I'm gonna look like a shirt tail, you know what I'm saying? Like, a sideline nigga or something now. I'm good. I ain't sideline nigga, too. Uh, some dudes don't care. Some dudes think they can have you no matter what, though. Like, my crazy ex, he still was like... Like, I was like, we could be cool, you know, let's have a conversation, be on the phone or whatever. He was like, nah, you know, I need to see my cave. I'm like, see your cave? You not seeing me? The crazy Crazy ass. ass. And he was like, he got mad at me for not wanting to see him. I'm like, no, bro. I can see why some niggas that confident, though, because so many girls want them. Like, remember when, um... The nigga with the dreads came in here and it was like, they was like, the girl was like, oh, it's the dreads for me. <laughs> of course, the, them, <laughs> them type niggas be like, all these bitches, I bet mean, he went home and be like, these bitches still want me, man. Okay. So man. why wouldn't a nigga be that confident, like, if girls act like that? So I get it why some niggas do that. Yeah, I know you crazy sometimes, though. <laughs> like, you crazy, just don't even let that go. Okay, um, I was watching, there's some shit on. On so social media, like I seen Joe Budden, he was like, um, he he was like happy to see the old rappers failing, like at life now, like. So like, do y'all think something wrong with that? Like, should people enjoy seeing people fail? Do yeah, do bad. 
he was like laughing. It was like he it was like it just made his day <laughs> when he was saying that shit. Nah. You don't agree? No, you shouldn't even want to see nobody do that. Even if like, it's I got him? enemies like that I don't just want to see him do bad. Like if I see him, it might be smoke, but like just them going through hell, going to jail and all kinds of shit. I don't want to see that on me. Okay, what what you think is wild, bro? Okay, let's just say like a, you know Mexican gangs, they'll snitch on they ops or whatever instead of like killing them, they'll just tell on them and they get thirty years. And blacks, we don't do that. We just be like, oh well, I don't, we don't fuck with the police. I'd rather just kill my op and risk going to jail. Like, which which do you think is wiser? But they they can't they can't snitch on each other, but they can snitch on they you know they ops or whatever. But what are you gonna tell on your op? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He committed it's a murder or something. He's selling drugs to get the ops out the way. Nah, man. Okay, let's say you think like that, right? Do you know how dangerous that is? You know how many people would kill you just for even thinking like that? That's how Mexican gangs think. What I'm telling you is that statement, right? Just having that idea in prison, saying something like you would consider snitching would make you a fucking you know a plate bro like saying shit like that like you don't even think about snitching ever you know what i'm saying like so you would rather you think that it was smarter to just go kill each other then i didn't say go kill but like i mean it's smarter ways to kill a motherfucker where you don't get time for it if you gotta kill a person you know we ain't gotta talk about that kind of shit on here but mm -hmm. uh yeah, man, it's smarter way. It's ways to do what you need to do without going to prison. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Without snitching too. It's you know snitching. Okay, you might be like, well, yeah, you know, you get the person off the street, but now you know a lot of people want to kill you. As if you get caught. Okay, so y'all yeah, think that when a person snitches, this shit is like protected by the police now? No, nah, imagine a like, a random Samaritan, a, a lady walking down the street is like. But oh. niggas don't be doing shit when they tell anyway. Like those aren't snitches; those are civilians. You talking about like a regular old lady? I mean, you would never know who a did it. A snitch is a criminal. You would never know who told though. If yeah. I call, if a I snitch see something happen, a person in that lifestyle who, you know. Tells on another criminal. But they, they don't get <laughs> when, don't when you understand as a criminal done, yeah. that it's you know consequences to what you're doing. You know what I mean? So you wrong by like when you get caught, you don't have the choice to say I'm gonna snitch and get out of this. That's like you fucking a bitch with AIDS, right? You don't got the choice to be like you know what, fuck it, man. I just fucked a bitch, but I'm gonna tell on another motherfucker so I don't get AIDS. Nah, you gotta wear that, bro. I know mean, that's a fucked up analogy. You ain't catch it? They probably caught it. They might catch <laughs> they really it. I, I guess I get the concept. But what I'm saying is, bro, you can't not face your consequences after you did some shit. You know what I'm saying? Just by, you know, getting an easy pass and telling on a nigga. That's, bro, no. What I'm saying in their culture is like, if you tell, it's not like you. Um, I won't say that, man. I won't say that's Mexican culture, bro, because I got some Mexican friends that's thorough. I'm saying, I've, I've heard that about LA. Uh, Mexican game. See, you don't want stereotyping, you know, put That's what I heard. I watched some like type that. of documentary. But you got really like, young um, motherfuckers, bro. And that was like, they, that's how they do it. They don't, um, they, you're not looked at as like bad. It, but as long as you don't do your homies like that, but you can do it to your enemy. Bro. It was like a documentary. Um, yo, that's a, just like a black man or anybody. A Mexican probably would hear you out faster. From what I've seen over that type of shit, they get busy. All my vato locos, where is vato? I'm telling you. I speak Spanish too. You know what I mean? Fuck with them niggas. Fluent? I mean, I know about a thousand something words, yeah. Poquito Espanol. You gotta write your book in Spanish, man. Nah, I don't know that many words. It's like 90,000 words in there. Each one. I mean, I'm sure a lot of words are repeated. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's how I did, though. Let me see. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. So okay, I'm gonna switch it up. So is having a tough life is that a good excuse um for being like toxic? Nope. You know what I'm saying? It depends, though. 
it might not be an excuse. A lot of times it could be just a cause. For real. Like, if you didn't get the right knowledge along the way, then you would turn toxic. But a lot of times, like, what you go through can, like, make you wise and shit. But, like, if you don't get the right knowledge within it, then you might just be toxic. And that's the real cause of it, not excuse. Okay. Does that make sense? Wow. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does that make sense, y'all? It might be an explanation, and I, it might not be an excuse. It might be an explanation. Yeah, like it might be the literal cause of it. Is what I'm saying. Versus, but that's an excuse, an excuse, right? Excuse, no, but like, no, it might be really the reason. Yeah. But that's an excuse. It's like whatever reason people feel like that's an excuse. I'm Just like if you lay in your tire flat, if you say that's what it is, they're like, oh, well, that's an excuse. Like whatever. That's the explanation though. Yeah, but it's still like it's still like it's an excuse, like what people would say. That's you just, just gotta not say nothing. Right. I think you can explain something, but again, like if the behavior don't change, if you understand yourself enough to explain why this is occurring, and then you still do the same thing again, that's an excuse. It no longer it's no longer an explanation. Like, oh, my mom used to beat me. All right, you understand that. You understand what it, the effect that it had on you now, what you're doing to change the way that you treat me. Beat the shit out of my girlfriend. You see, that's an excuse. Because she did it to me. I got beat, so I'm going to beat the shit out of my girlfriend. That's an excuse. But that's the explanation. That's the reason why, right? But How do y'all explain it? You can understand the explanation, but if you don't want to change the, if you don't want to change the habit, that's when it's just an excuse. Like, oh yeah, that's when I did it. I mean, this is why I'm doing it, because this happened to me. But just say you like to be girls. Like, that's the ex- that's the explanation. What if you grow up in a top, I mean, a uh, dysfunctional household, right? Wouldn't that be, like, a reasonable reason to be toxic when you grow up? Yeah, but when you decide, oh, but this is who I am and I don't care, like, because this is what I came from, that's an excuse. Well, like, what if you, like, retarded from that shit? Like, you know, a lot of people, like, this shit is so dysfunctional at home to where it's just, like, all the yelling and shit. Like, the kids never really learn shit. Go to school, end up special ed. I don't know. I think at the point where you are able to adequately explain this is happening because this happened to me, you understand this is an issue. And then when you want to keep validating the issue that keeps reoccurring, with this explanation is just an excuse for you to do it because you know what's wrong and you know what you're doing okay um last time somebody like threatened to like expose y'all if that ever happened expose us I don't got nothing exposed. Like, um, let me see. A, a job. A, I don't know, man. Just nothing. <laughs> you know, I, you know. Okay, I guess kind of like, um, I guess go over your books and like what inspired them. And like, give, if you got some good quotes, like from the books, like let us know. Uh, all right, I don't know about quotes, but all right, so. This is my first book. It's called Moving Target. I wrote it um, in prison. I did 15 years. I probably did about five years before I wrote that one. I typed it on a a legal uh, flip phone I had and uh, got it published, self-published. I started a company called Wildlife Publishing. Named after my group, Wildlife, which was a rap group, me and my best friend, Shrad, and Powerful. Rest in peace to both of them. You know, um, this book is just an urban fiction novel, you know what I'm saying, about just a lot of crime and, you know, niggas doing a lot of gangster shit, niggas go to prison, all kind of stuff. It's a good book. I don't want to go too deep. But um, this is a love story, but it's a gangster one. It's called Promise, a Bloody Love Story by Now Born. Um, set in Baltimore. Glenn Burnie, too. They up there. Yeah. PG, too. They up there, PG. Yeah. yeah. That's based on a love story from you, or you just made it up? No, it's made up. Well, it might be a little piece of me in there somewhere. I don't know. I'm sure it is. You know, I'm the author, so. Like, loosely based, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, dude in here, he's a blood. That's why it's called a bloody love story. I'm not a gang member, y'all, at all. So, yeah, um, it's a good book, though. And this one, though, is my last book. It's called The Fiery Furnace. It's my memoir, right? It's 20 short stories in this book where I'm telling you just different episodes that I went through in there, you know, I guess some of the most traumatic things I've seen in there, how I dealt with it and how I was phased by it, whatever, whatever. And also I found like the stories that I went through that had like the best principles that I could share with people to kind of like make it a, a self-help type book. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so yeah, that's what my books can be found everywhere. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all that. But my website is where I want everybody to go. WLpublishing.com. You know, you go to my store, you see all my my friend, my clothing, my books, all that. Just check it out, whatever. Okay. I do music too, and I got some movies coming too. But go ahead. Okay, so if you can go back in time to where you committed, whatever, whatever you did to get locked up, if you can go talk to yourself as you now to go talk to yourself before you went to jail, like if you was just like a stranger to yourself, like what would you say to convince you to like go another way? Be more patient. Yeah, like, you can wait, like, you ain't got to be in a rush to get it right now, like, you know what I'm saying, like, because if I could have waited maybe another week or something, you know what I mean, I might have been, you know what I mean, but, you know, when you young, it's a lot of uh, pressures on a black boy, I think, man, when I went in, I'm 40 now, 42 actually, but when I went out, I was 25, no, 26, oh, and that was my third bid, by the way. You know what I mean? I've really been in and out the system ever since I was like 19. Right. So, um, but yeah, what was the question again, though? Because <laughs> I'll be all over the place. You were telling yourself time. to be more patient. Oh, yeah, I was telling myself to be more patient and just, you know, take your time, man. You know, focus more on your talents that, you know what I mean, could get you the same money and stuff. You know, it just might take longer, you know what I mean? Okay, so like, um, like if you have a son, would you want him to you be raised in the inner city, or would you just take him out to the country because you know it's like it's less stuff he got to deal with? Suburbs. Let him, but expose him to the city too, because I don't want my son to be no punk. You know, I want him to go be around tough shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I don't want him to just think everything's sweet because. When shit ain't sweet, he gonna be spoiled and then he gonna be stealing and stuff because he used to people giving him everything and stuff, you know? So I want him to get beat up and all kind of shit and learn how to fight life, you know what I'm saying? That happened in the suburbs. Hmm? That happens in the suburbs. Cool. <laughs> don't, I don't really care where he grow up at, you know? I want to be on a fucking, in a beach house somewhere by the time yeah. I have a son. I don't got no kids, you know? So like, yeah. Um, but whatever the case, man, I just want to make sure my son or daughter got the right knowledge from me. You know what I mean? A lot of people, these brothers don't be, our sisters don't really be educating their children and shit. And they don't be knowing nothing, man. That's why they so fucked up. Not only just with the gang shit and all that, just the whole, you know, I don't want the homosexuality, you know, is all from just not knowing who you are. You think it's wrong? Well, I think homosexuality is wrong. Yeah. You trying to get me canceled already, bro? I'm just getting out trying to get my little career started and shit. This motherfucker. That's what I said. I'm not homosexual, so, you know, I can say that. Yeah, you It's wrong for me. I respect that. That was a decent answer. Yeah. That was pretty wise right there. Like you being coached or something. I'm coaching myself, man. You know, I, I knew I had to like kind of filter my shit, but um, yeah, that's my answer. Mm -hmm. Fuck these sis ass niggas, man. Uh, that's you. I don't say nothing. <laughs> every, every time I ask, when I used to ask gay questions, I would never speak on it. Like I mentioned before, I was like, um, I asked this guest, I was like, if yo, if you had a son and he wanted to marry a guy, would you walk him down the aisle? And you know, some niggas uh, do that politically correct shit, and some niggas like, hell no, nah. like that shit ain't going. So, mm -hmm. But I don't speak on it. And they was like, boo, what you would do? I said, nigga, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't even speak on that shit like that. But I don't be feeling like I'm gonna get canceled though, because I kind of, I 
say what they all want to say. But I don't speak on that gay shit like that. Why? It's not necessary yeah, for me. Canceled. No, you ain't getting canceled. Ain't no such thing as bad publicity over here. Cause I, I don't, I don't. Um, well, I, I mean, my views like I don't. I like to see girls. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I just don't want to be around nobody gay. Like as far as like a homie or. Oh. You get what I'm saying? Like but they cool though. Mm -hmm. I ain't never like uh, beat up no gay nigga or. You know what I'm saying? I had to fight somebody who was gay. Okay, um, I guess, okay, you can do your thing or whatever. So is there anything that we didn't touch on that you may want to leave the audience with? First, ask some more questions, man. It was getting fun, man. I'm cracking up. Now we're getting fun. <laughs> now we can fun. keep on passing on them. All right, let's go back to the ones I skipped. Uh-uh. <laughs> Yeah, most of my stuff be like relationships stuff. Then a lot of times when you go to like the family stuff, people kind of dig into it. But she like, fuck that nigga. I ain't telling you. Yeah, because you asked for like the traumatic stuff. Like, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, what was a happy moment with your family? Happy moment? Mm -hmm. uh, family reunions and stuff. They used to be. Since I've been home, I'm less, you know, like on that family shit. You know, dang, I probably watch it too, so dang, I don't know. You know what I mean? But like, I just been kind of like really to myself, man. Like, you know, just... So, all your family, they up north? A lot of them, you know. Well, a lot of my family dying, bro. Like, it's, it's crazy, man. Like, and the people that I really call family now, just like, you know, we like, um, shit. There ain't many, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, because to me, family ain't about just because we got the same blood, bro. Mm -hmm. Family to me is the people that call you and check on you, you know, see how you're doing and all that. Not to call you and gossip or no shit like that, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? People that really care about me is family to me, so. I don't give a fuck about that blood shit, bro. <laughs> For real. Unless it's like my nuclear family, mom, sisters, nephews, nieces, they matter. They, they could do no wrong, but like anybody else, you know. I just did 15 years without talking to a lot of them people. So it's like, I don't even know people no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, my family was nigga. I've, I've known people in jail <laughs> more consistently than so-called family and so-called friends. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm real kind of careful with words I use, you know, especially family. You know? My, um, I got a homeboy in prison he, for a murder. You look just like his little brother. But I mean... He, I, I, I gotta stop taking his call because he was like begging too much. I'm the type of nigga, I seen you 20 or 30 here and there, but this shouldn't be no all the time thing. Because I'd be like, damn, if I was in there, I want somebody to send something. But you just, nigga just was doing it too much. But I say, I say to everybody, like, you know, send them something. Like, it ain't got to be much because niggas be depreciating the $10. You get know what I'm saying? So why not help them out? You, you send um, anybody anything? Yeah, it's kind of scary, man, like, every day, every week. Anybody ever been in prison? Uh -uh. No, I, I was locked up, like, on some domestic violence shit for, like, three days or something. But other than that, they, the case got dropped. It was some bullshit, but other than that, no. Nah. So what if you went to prison just on some bullshit, innocent shit, right? Mm -hmm. And ended up, like, needy in there and needed to call home and ask for money, right? Would you do it or would you starve? I would, because the only people who call and check up on me or try to do something for me is like my mom and dad. Or what if the person you were sending money, right? What if they was like dealing with some real trauma or just getting hot or something like that? Because like, I know guys, when I was in there, I never smoked it, but like that K2, mm -hmm. it was an epidemic in there. You know, and like brothers were really fucked up on this shit, calling home, lying. I remember, well, anyway, but yeah, um, mm. so... I don't really judge people, bro, because I've seen it all. Like, I've had roommates that's been in there for 46 years, you know what I mean? That, like, it's not naked. I can't even humanize with them. I don't really, I can't, I don't know what's in your mind. I never did 40 years, you know what I mean? Like, I never went through, oh, a nigga might be getting high or some shit, fucked up on something because he got 40 fucking years, bro. Like, that's how he dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I need money. 
I'm calling home. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? If you don't send it, what? This nigga might fucking kill himself. Then yeah, what? So I, I think, you know, your friends who weak minded. I be feeling like that shit weak minded. He's not weak minded. Uh, he a manipulative motherfucker, too. Bro, I'm going to tell you something, man. Like, a lot of people that judge people that go to prison would go to prison and be pussy. What you mean, judging? I mean, just be like, I don't know, man. Like, to me, like, I don't like, like, I've had people, I've asked people for money in prison before. Yeah. Right? And, like, if a person was to bring it up to me now that I'm out, like, yeah, I'm going to reach out, I would probably punch them in their shit. They never sent you nothing? No, even if they did, don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. I'm home, nigga. Don't, I, I needed it back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck, nigga? You going to bring it up now? I'm the better person. I probably would start off there. I'm I, I mean, that's you, but like, if I call, because like, I was a nigga that have gave to niggas too, though. I've never, you know what I'm saying? When I was out, I was a nigga breaking bread with people. Mm -hmm. So like, if I call and ask, I really need this shit. I got family too. Like, I ain't never really going to be fucked up, fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But like, if I ask you for something and, you know, you come at me like that, man, I'm, I'm going to probably hate you for it. I already expect people not to be there for me, though. So... I'm the, like, my own mother be like, you would rather die than ask for help. And it's like, they the type you of people. You said mother just now, like, you from PG. I'm from PG. <laughs> That's how they say it. But, they say smack, too, like, like getting hot. They like, you about to go get smacked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they well, call you it, smack. You smack. You fried. And cigarettes is fogs. Oh, no, I don't say that. Yeah. I don't, I don't no smoke cigarettes, though. Okay. Yeah, that probably is bottom <laughs> But, right, yeah. but, back to it. Yeah. but my mother will say that like you would rather die than ask for help and it's like yeah because they the type of people that they gonna bring it back up and i don't have time for that because i'm always that happy-go-lucky person i'm changing the vibe in every room you would do 15 years them. without asking for help i was in a domestic violence relationship for three years just figuring out how i'm gonna get out i didn't go and ask nobody mm -hmm. for no help so probably I mean, I would go to who I think I could go to if I need to go to them, but it would be like the last resort for me to go to somebody because people always bring it back up. I don't give a fuck no more. Like, you bring it back up, it's just fuck you. All right, nigga, <laughs> yeah, I use you, bitch. Fuck you. And that's how I be <laughs> now. Like, and that's how you want to carry it? People do. People had to tell me that before. Like, okay, if they do help you and they bring it back up, oh, well, tell them thank you and do it again. But I'm thank just not you. like that. <laughs> Fuck you very much. But I only ask people mm -hmm. that I know love me for real. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm just cool with you, I'm not going to ask you for nothing. Like, this, I'm not going to do You that. don't never know who really love you, though, bro. And especially until you in a time like that. I'm saying people who show me they love me. Not just, I'm guessing and wondering. Like, you get what I'm saying? They showed me. So, like, my mom. Yeah, and my sister. They are, my sister be funny. The ones you really she don't want to ask, though. She'll help me, though. You really don't want to ask them, even though I have, but like, you don't want to ask them. You'd rather ask your niggas or niggas in the street that's getting money, you know, right. oh, yeah, because know. like, you know, you already left your mom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like, damn, now she's sending you money too. You ain't even there helping her. You get what I mean? So like, that's one of the last people. And that's what, how I would bring it to my niggas. Like, yo, y'all doing this and that, man. Look, nigga, shit. Just make sure I'm straight. I don't gotta ask my mom for shit. But my mom was my dad, so I don't look at it like I'm just, Taken from her, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. That whole prison shit is a whole nother situation and conversation, too, because it's like, you know, you got to go into why the system is the way it is, or, you know, why so many brothers are in there, you know, how they actually getting so much money off of niggas and shit, and how it's like a. Yeah, it's a, you know, a lot of money. Yeah, so you can't just look at, okay, what the situation is, okay. You know what I mean? You just got to really unpack it. And we definitely targeted though. You do you feel like um like your neighborhood was targeted? Like I lived in a lot of neighborhoods, bro. Like I've lived all up and down the East Coast, bro. So like shit, and I don't mind being in targeted places. Like I, when I moved to a new city, I like the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? I go where the rough shit at. You know what I'm saying? I like to be in the mix, know what's what, because that's just how I'm built. So you know? yeah. You feel like you attracted to the places that target. I'm just comfortable, man. I'm a black ass nigga, bro. I'm good anywhere. You know what I'm saying? I always have been. You know, I'm just the black man God, you know what I'm saying? So he can pretty much be where the fuck he wanna be. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my attitude over everything. I kinda I, I mean, I I was comfortable at a point because I grew up in the projects, but then when I started like I would always work two jobs, so I always be getting money and then 
like my homeboy, homeboy would want to rob me or I hear him say little shit. And it was just like, that ain't a place I need to be at. So, I mean, I go there and chill, but it's like, I ain't really comfortable like that. But when you're younger, you, you can walk in the projects at three o'clock, like with your homies or by yourself, like you be comfortable like that. But when you start getting money and see how niggas, how they think about you and they really don't want you over there, like, and brothers like, gotta know you you'll, you'll stand up for yours, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody, I don't know. People might have been plotting to take mine before. Like, I done seen little young people, but I did my time for armed um, robbery and shit. Like, so y'all know, I was laying niggas down, all that kind of shit at one time. So, like, I had a reputation for that shit where I'm from. And the only niggas I saw kind of hating was, like, young niggas that wanted to be that. Yeah. And I would see them like, okay, shit, nigga, I'm gonna give me a chain. I got a gun too. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would see that and then I would just kind of scoop them up, like, y'all ride with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, get in the game. You know what I mean? But, like, other than that, I never had nobody looking at me like like the neighborhood rob nigga looking at me to take my shit. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe when I was young, kind of green, trying to hustle a little, whatever. You know, maybe some shit like that. But, like, for the most part, no. I just wouldn't even want to. Like my mother, she from the hood, whatever, and she has worked herself to a different level of things, but she will still be around the same circle and then wonder why like people act a certain way or treat her a certain way. And I'm like, you have to elevate your circle at some point. These people, people be hating on you. And that just is what it is. Like you could try to be as friendly as you want to be or help as many people as you want to help. But that hate is still hate. So I would just not want to put myself in that situation once I get to a certain level. Not to say that I don't love where I came from or I don't appreciate whatever I got from it, but at a certain point, you writing books and starting clothing brands and upgrading your life and stuff. I wouldn't want to go back just to say, oh, I was this and I was, no, nah, I was. That's what's up, but this is what I'm doing now and like catch me over here. Catch me at a book signing. Catch me at the store with the clothing brand. Like, and I'm going to show you love here. I'm going to show you a different level of where we can go from where we came from. Versus coming back home and try to keep on showing you. And nobody, and there's not no love out there. Like my brothers, when we first started, I've been gone from home. But when they first started leaving the city, I was like, good. It ain't no love in the city. It's no love out there. Like One of my brothers be like, I'd rather get caught with it than without it. And it's like, when did the city become that? When did you have to become this person? If that's what you got, to, the mindset you got to walk around with, that's when it's time to change yeah, up your scene. That goes back to that, what I was saying about the pressures on black boys, man. Mm -hmm. Like, if you ain't like, all right, so who do we have really got in the youth right now? In the, the cities, youth. right? Who are they looking up to? The youth. The drug dealers. The okay. niggas who get money. I mean, drug dealers are so, because I mean, like, you know, you got... The LGBT selling drugs right now. You know what I mean? Like, you can get drugs from white boys. They ain't really looking up to that, G. I would say that the gangs right now kind of got their attention. You know, everything they say is gang, gang. They, niggas can't post a picture without throwing up some type of semblance of a fucking, you know what I mean? So it's like that culture is gravitating the youth, right? Why though? Because, like, ain't nobody teaching nothing positive. Right? At one time, you had, like, even like we were talking about the music earlier, you had more positive type music, right? But now everybody's dumb, it seems like. Like, the vocabulary's dumb. They almost sound like they can't even talk. You know what I mean? Like, their speech be fucked up, how on fucking pills and mollies and shit. And that's the standard in hip hop, so they dumbing people down. And these are the people they looking up to because of they, they wealth and all that. You know, so now. And then you don't got nobody teaching them shit like us who got a voice and really know some shit. That's a part of the reason why I wrote that book, you know what I'm saying, and really start getting some information out because, like, brothers is dumb as hell. And because of that. I know Pac was saying, he was like, I, on some of my records, I'll be slurring and shit and I'll be drunk. He said, I figured that's how people be listening to it anyway. Mm -hmm. So it just got turned up a notch with the next generation. They own pills and liquor it's like they just, it got turned up some more like so and it's drug and addict music yeah. versus us coming up with drug dealing music mm -hmm. that's all drug addict music now yeah and then that gang shit and all that man it's just it's corny man the whole shit bro brothers fucked up and that gay shit you know the way niggas are dressing now it's just weird man you know it was a nigga um i was at 
And he said, the open mic, he was making fun of me because my pants was loose. And I said, what kind of fucked up shit is that? Like, so you going, you saying shit about me because I don't look gay, nigga? Like, hey. what the fuck? It's just like backwards now. His shit was tight, my shit was loose. But he making fun of me. When, you know, back in the day, it would have been. How old are you? I'm 38. All right, so, but well, look, you remember when niggas wore skinny jeans when we were young? Pull up, pull up some old rap videos like uh, Poor Righteous Teachers, Rock That Funky Joint. That nigga jeans was skinny as a bitch. Tight. Wild intelligent, I ain't trying to play you now. You my nigga, but like. I'm saying the rappers I used to like, though, they wouldn't, um, they didn't dress like that. Like, I grew up like DMX and niggas like that. Like, niggas wasn't. Yeah, 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 that was a little later, though. I mean, I went into like hip hop like, like when they like too short them like in the eighties, niggas yeah. jeans was skinny, bro. Yeah. But like just niggas wasn't as gay. But if you listen to a lot of the lyrics, they were kind of homeboy mm -hmm. right. A lot, even your man DMX, rest in peace to him, Biggie. A lot of niggas was kind of like being kind of groomed for this whole gay agenda that's being pushed real heavy now. But back then, it was subtle. You know what I mean? Yeah, All our favorite out. rappers like was saying it. You know. I'm like, damn, man. DMX. Even J Park. Jada Kid said something that broke my heart one time. What did he say? On that last days with um, Biggie, he said, uh, perhaps for instance, I get his faggot a French kiss. I don't like that, Bob. Mm. Not from Jada. I don't like that, Jada. The fuck was that? Man? A lot of, a lot of, it's Pumble just, you pass it. <laughs> Like you just you you just keep on moving past it. It wasn't highlighted back then, but a lot of rappers back then was saying weird Damn, stuff. Dude, I, didn't even do that. I be hearing okay. stuff too. I be I can't I couldn't post something, but like Biggie had some stuff. I'm like, he yeah, so he yeah her daddy's dick is the only. Thing. Oh, that's that's one. Like that's it's like what? I I, that's the only one I heard of. I never heard of that shit there that Jada kids. Damn. Damn. That's on um the double CD when Biggie died. Uh, life after death. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, you don't even look at the nigga the same. Even Wu Tang, right? Damn. Hold up. So I'm a five percenter. Y'all know about the five percenters? I heard it. Okay. Well, damn. I ain't exposing all the five percenters or nothing like that. But Wu Tang did some gay shit too. That was kind of weird. That I thought about years later. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was gay. Right? They did a skit called Torture on their first album. Right? Mm -hmm. And they saying, yo, I'll fucking stab you with this and that, right? Remember? But it's one where he's like, yo, I'll stab you in your dick. I'll, I'll hang you from a five-story building from your dick. To me, those jokes are too gay. <laughs> because, like, nigga, if you hang me from my dick, you got to hold my dick. Mm -hmm. And hold me up this month, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You ain't even supposed to be, like, exposed to another man's dick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, like, just... Crazy. Yeah, so the rap shit. I don't say that kind of shit in my bars. I rap too, but I don't say no homo erotic shit, nothing more. I don't no think balls. what's the point of it. Like, I, I understand you <clears throat> running out of shit to say, but. Nah, see, look, it's, nah, it's, it was it's, a part of the point. culture at one time. It's see, still. Saying fuck you is gay, bro. A so I to a dude, yeah. yeah, but fuck you is like worse than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, but we say these things to disrespect a person. We don't know. That the people that originated these terms, we ain't gonna say who, but they gay. And yeah. they, you know, and also these people who own these companies, they promote this rap shit so heavy because it's promoting their lifestyle in a way that they can't articulate it. The shit that we kind of like rap about and glamorize a lot in this culture is really the, the lifestyle of the people who run the industry, their nature, right? And because we create it so artistically, they try to like invest in it and make money off of it and all that shit. And plus they like hearing it because exactly. it's talking about their nature, all that killing shit. That's who buying it. The black man ain't no killer by nature. They ain't saying he no pussy though. But like by nature, the black man is peaceful, righteous and all that, you know? Obviously, that people would be still sitting yeah. in the peaceful seat. Well, not really now, because niggas is not peaceful now. We no, got a lot of hate and, trans and aggression towards each other. Yeah, but as a people... What's the ratio, though, to where... Uh, because they act like 
Like eighty percent of black people are crazy. What's the ratio of black people that commit crimes? The more heinous crimes are committed by white people, it's always been that way. Hold on. Hey, I don't think you can equate crazy to committing crimes either. Well, I'm thinking you know about I, mean? I guess crazy as far as like murders. All murders ain't crazy either. Well, the most like, heinous I've had people ones. tell me why they murdered and I was like, damn, you know. There's white people that you watch <laughs> all day on Snap. It'd be white women that kill their husband because they wanted more money. Okay. Yeah, it was white women. They was uh, taking insurance policy out on bonds and killing. We talking yes. about white people. That's a whole other And so that's what we're saying, like white versus black. Like who's doing the most heinous stuff? White people commit more heinous crimes than us. The reason why there's so many of us in the system is because we're systematically put there. There's things it's like put poverty in our crimes mostly. You go to um, an impoverished area and you see a truckload of guns out of nowhere. Like, where did this come from? How did this get here? Who could have put this here? They were saying this shit was real. Um, it really had. I know um, people were saying that. Some rappers were saying that back in the day, they used to have train cars. They used to just be full of like guns and shit. And who was going to get it but the people in that community? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, system, just like now, we see it a little bit subtly, but the scams in Atlanta. How everybody got the same scam. They were given the same scam just to wait for how long, however long you think that you're getting away with it for us to take it away from you and then lock you up. Now you're in jail, you a scammer. You can't, you're not gonna be able to get no job after that. That's fraud. Like, it's just the whole system. Versus Caucasians, they really be, like you said, it, you'll see um, cases of them killing bums after they take out insurance policies on them, killing their husband, just. Killing their parents, like you could have just asked mommy and daddy for the jet, bro. Like, I you wanted the jet to yourself, and so you killed them. So, yeah, it is crazy. But yeah, uh, I, I was saying that to say, like, you were saying that we naturally peaceful, we are, and we empathize so much. We are just we want to care and we want other groups of people to care the same way that we do as a general people. That's why every time when white people are able to do something, what's our first thing? If that was us, this would have happened. Who cares? We already know that. We know that they don't care about us, but we keep trying to con convince them to care about us. Versus, what do they do? They take everything they want. They don't ask for no permission, and they don't even ask for forgiveness. It's just, yep, I did it. What do y'all think about black people who say, I hate niggas? You ever hear people say that? Yeah. I'd be like, wow, you, you sound ignorant as fuck, bro. Like, I've said it, though. Like, but I didn't mean, like, I hate black people, because I don't think that's what nigga means. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I say it, I mean, like, I hate the type of people that just piss me off. You know what I mean? Like, I might say that about a white motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, I hate this nigga. You know what I mean? But, like. Now, if you say I hate niggas on some, what's my man, Uncle Ruckus type shit? Yeah. Man, you got problems. <laughs> I'm saying, but that's how it sound, though. Like, if you just hearing that shit, you be like, it just, it sound like I'm I had an old school roommate, man. He used to say, niggas and flies, I despise. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and I get it. Because, <laughs> like, the shit you see every day in there, you be like, man, fuck these niggas, man. I hate y'all, too. So. It's ignorance, I think, when people say that. Um, like, it sounds ignorant, but they're speaking on the ignorance that they see. And if I use that term, if I say nigga, if I be like, man, that's a nigga. I'm talking about somebody ignorant. And it could be a female, it could be a Chinese person. If it's ignorant, you, it's a nigga to me. I'm going to be real like, I say nigga a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My nigga. You know what I mean? Hey, nigga. <laughs> But I'm not saying nigger or no shit like that. I'm, and I got a hell of knowledge of myself. I know who I am. I know all that, the history of word nigger and all that. But, you know, in certain circles, man, and places, you might have to speak in that language to get your point across. You know what I mean? That's I ain't, ain't going to go a buck around a bunch of gangsters and be like, hey, hey, buddy, you know what I mean? Like, I might be like, hey, motherfucker, I might have to talk like that to get you to understand because that's how y'all talk to each other. But I can see a, a <clears> new <throat> really with that shit, like, being who he is, he would be comfortable enough to, <coughs> like, to talk like that. And he just know niggas, I'm this, I'm still that nigga. And I can say, hey, pal, I can talk like a white well, nigga. You that nigga, that ain't how you talk. He just that's might want to. Me. That's true. You, I, hey, pal. Yeah. Man, bro. Not necessarily, hey, pal, but I think that you should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that you should um, basically uh, 
uh, adjust yourself to your surroundings. I think you should bring your surroundings up to you. So if you step into a room full of gangsters, how you say bro or brother and stuff, you was like, my brothers, my sisters. That's something that I might say. What's going on, bro? Or what's going on, brother? Something like that. Well, let's not say gangsters too, because I ain't no gang member. I ain't with that gang. Man. Jay Prince, he he seems like he's like he don't he don't really get out of character, but you know he don't. He, I remember him saying, you know, he didn't refer to like he was a killer or something. Cause he was like, um, I can't speak on that because I'm free. You know, a lot of niggas they'll say something like they didn't kill somebody, mm -hmm. but he he don't never like get out of character or nothing. Like he just be who he is. He be calm. He don't act like he ever did nothing. Mm -hmm. But his son kind of like the opposite. Yeah, I think that oh, you should be that way. Like you should really hold people to that respectful, uh, like just hold people accountable to be respectful. Walk in the room, same way, your head high, it don't matter what you say. If somebody tell me don't call me nigga, I won't call him nigga, you know. But well, I don't say bitch. Like, I know it's a lot of people, you ever hear that? Like, they be like, hey, bitch, you stupid, or something like that. I don't never say that to nobody. Not, nah, especially not to no man, like, oh, I know this total I'm disrespect to If I call you a bitch, I'm trying you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mean to, like, I, it wasn't a mistake, you know what I mean? Or, I got a homeboy though, he say bitch a lot. Like see, everybody him, in his little circle. Listen, he be like, bitch. Like Yo, that, but it be he's like trying goofy, you. like yeah. you know what I'm saying? He's trying you. That ain't goofy, bro. And he probably do if he do it with women around and you let it happen, oh my god. No, it just it'll be like when we be like four <clears> deep <throat> in the car, like and we be joking with each other. Next time be like, bro, don't ever say that again. If you say it again, I'm gonna say your mama a bitch. I don't take it like that. I guess it just depends bro, on you. My brothers call each other that all day and night. My sisters don't even call each other that. And girls say that shit, but like if a man say it, bro, damn, that's disrespectful. Yeah. Bro, that was, we was like teenagers. Like that's, that was his thing. Like, yeah, bitches, damn. Yeah, ain't no friendly way of saying that to a lady. Bitch. Bitch. What? Bro, but they all day talk like Pussy. that. And they be like, all right, love you, B. <clears throat> like, you know the word. And, and be like, I look at that, I'm like, nah. It's being silly, kind of. Yeah, I get it. And that's why it's like, oh, that's y'all thing. Shit, bro. I don't no. like silly <laughs> shit. I, I get silly, but like, let me be the silly one. Yeah. I don't need other silly niggas around, man. If I want to be on some silly shit, let me get silly. But don't come around me with that silly shit, bro. Yeah. Not that silly way you calling me bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Next thing you slap me in the back of the head and some shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I take, I definitely, if it's somebody I didn't know and from females, like, I take it as, like, total disrespect. Like, even if they joking type shit. You know? um, anybody that I respect, I'll never call them out of their name, especially not a bitch. Ever. But different strokes with different folks. <clears throat> if you respect me, you wouldn't call me out of my name. Man. You call people nigga all day, though. Don't matter, but if they tell me they're offended, I won't say it again. But you call them out their name and you respect them? Yeah, I mean, I don't look at niggas disrespect when I say it. That's, that's I your bitch that's ass nigga. You have to teach people what's, what's respectful to you. Like. Right, and that's what I'm saying. If a person don't protest when I say nigga, then fuck it, you know what I mean? They're not offended. I'm not offended if you say nigga, but if you say bitch, I'm offended. Yo, bro, don't call me that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't call you a bitch, did I? All right, then. So somebody be pranky, like like if we did, if I know that's like like a tick for you, like if I pranked you, would that make you like get out of character? Like I was like, yeah, we about to interview this bitch. Wait, on the phone? No, yeah. like he was here, like and then we was like, yeah, we gonna prank. Or you came here again, and I was like, yeah, we gonna prank this nigga. I'm gonna call him bitch a few times. That'll make you turn you up. You won't call me bitch a few times. You might say it the first time if you get it all the way out. <laughs> but I'll straighten you out, bro. That's what I'm saying. I'll straighten that up. Like, yo, you watch your mouth, dog, on your show. Yeah. You'll That's fight? You'll fight? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll fight for that. Hell yeah, nigga. You won't be worried about going to jail? Nope. <laughs> we both going to jail if we fight, bro. Right? Nah, you gotta tell yourself that prank. patience thing again. But listen, bro. <laughs> you guys are just leave. Don't try to prank shit. <laughs> yeah. We'll be all right, man. Yeah, that's what's up. <clears throat> when I know when I know somebody trying to like make me um like tick me like give me a tick or whatever I I, I don't they usually have to repeat it because I don't react to it. So when they say it, I just be like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I remember one girl tried to make me mad. She was like, um, she was like, yeah, if I'm pregnant, I'm gonna get rid of this motherfucker. 
I was like, yeah, like I was saying, man. Um, then she said it again, like I was supposed to Reality. get mad. I'm like, okay, like, what the fuck? Like, I, I was supposed to get mad for that? <laughs> okay, I guess we're gonna wrap it up. The 11 o'clock council, though, bro. Jesus, my fuck. <laughs> okay, um, I guess we went over your book. So, you, you ain't doing music? You just doing. Yeah, um, I haven't recorded nothing like to talk about right now. I've been in the studio fucking around a little bit, but I just got all my equipment and shit. So, in short, um, y'all can go to SoundCloud. And look up the Valedictorian mixtape by Now Born. It's 45 songs I recorded in jail on a fucking cell phone, but it sound good. Original beats and all that. Um, but right now, I'm in the process of working on some real studio album type shit. Um, I don't say too much because it's really like in the baby stages. But y'all hear something about that soon. You offering people publishing services? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, y'all can send me some manuscripts if y'all got something worthwhile. But right now, I'm really trying to focus on movies. You know, I just bought some cameras and my little MacBook and all that shit. So we gotta do it like that, man. So what's the uh, character you gonna play? I really like. I got a screenplay that I'm not even in it, but um, I definitely want to turn this into a, a series. The 20 stories in here, I want to turn this one into an episode, not to go too deep. But I want to turn this, I might play the main character in this one too. I don't know. But we're going to do some things this year. <clears throat> okay, um, any last words, Katie? Yeah. Okay, um, literally is no pressure, man. I uh, will see y'all in a minute and we out.